Uh, hey guys, this is lecture video 2 of CSE 2000 Q2S Computer Science 2 uh, taught by Lawrence Orifala and my name is Lawrence Orifala. Uh, let's get into it. So, um, we are going down the line here. Today is September 4th. Uh, we, today we are going to do the second and last week of review where we're going to talk about arithmetic, control trucks, control structures, and loops. Uh, last week we did review part one, which is about data types and input output. Uh, that being said, your activity one for that is going to be due midnight tonight, in case you haven't already done it. And uh, w w when we cover everything we learned today, your activity two, which we're going to do in this video, is going to be due midnight of next week. So uh, here's the tentative schedule with colors. So. Uh, all of this pertains to this, all of this pertains to this, and then after uh, this video, you're going to have all the knowledge you need in order to do uh, Lab 1. So stick around because I'm actually going to discuss Lab 1 uh, today in this video, but uh, first we got to do all this first. So uh, getting right into it, we're going to start with arithmetic. So. <clears throat> So uh, we kind of talked about arithmetic in the last video, but I, I didn't really go too deep into it. So uh, as you already know, the mathematical operators, you know what they are, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. They work for both integer and floating point numbers. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention was that there's another mathematical operator called modulus, which is represented by the percent sign. It can only be used on integers, and it returns the remainder when operand 1 is divided by operand 2. So you might be scratching your head on about what that means, so I put a couple examples here. So 16 mod 5 equals 1. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, 16 divided by 5 is 3, remainder 1. And because we only care about the remainder, uh, it outputs one, okay? So another example is we have is three mod seven. So three divided by seven is zero, remainder three. And because mod returns a remainder, it's gonna give us three, okay? And uh, one more note, if uh, divide is used on integers, uh, you, you should already know by now that integers are whole numbers they're not fractions, they're not floating points, there's no decimal, okay? So you might be wondering what happens if we uh, <clears throat> use division on integers. Well, the result will be the integer value with the fractional part removed. Uh, there is no rounding. And to demonstrate that, um, we're going to get into lecture activity 2, uh, run this code here, and then uh, analyze the results. Okay, so... I'm gonna go ahead and oops. I'm gonna go ahead and open Visual Studio. Create a new project. Choose empty C project. I'm going to save this where we saved it before. Here. We'll call it <coughs> lecture activity two. Okay, so over here we are gonna make our CPP file, call it main.cpp, click add, and now we need to add our typical C jargon. So include IO stream using name space standard int main return zero. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to Copy this, put that in here, 
Now, uh, this this lecture video today is going to be a little bit different. I I actually went ahead and took the time to pre-write everything. Uh, the reason for this is because when I was rehearsing myself recording this lecture video, uh, I looked at it and I realized I was taking way too much time typing. So I just decided to pre-write everything. And you can just copy-paste everything uh, from the from the PowerPoint if you want to. Um, I, I don't care so much if you're not typing. Uh, what matters is that you look at this and you understand this. That's all I want. Okay? So uh, let's go ahead and run this and uh, see what we got here. So, uh, what we have is the, the, the fact that uh, this program, well, these sections, they demonstrate everything that we were talking about earlier when we said modules returns the remainder, and then when we do division on integers, the fraction was removed. So, if I go here, here are add, subtract, multiply, and divide. They do everything that... They do everything that we already knew that they would. Uh, over here we have, we demonstrate the mod operator in section 1b. So 23 mod 5 is going to give us 3. Uh, the reason for that is because 23 divided by 5 is 4, uh, remainder 3. And because the remainder is 3, it spits out 3. And uh, lastly, we have division on integers and floating points. So I have... Uh, four variables here, okay? I, I called it int A, int B, and then double A and double B. Uh, the values are exactly the same, 23, 5, 23, 5. Now, um, if you look at the results here, um, I, I did the division for in two different forms. One is uh, in int form, the other one is in double form. Now, in terms of floating points, 23 divided by 5 is 4.6. But when I did it through integers, uh, we get 4. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, because uh, I, I have an integer dividing an integer. The result has to be an integer, okay? So because of that, uh, if you did the normal division, you'd get 4.6. But because the fractional part is removed... Uh, you would actually get just four. The point six is lost. Okay. Now, uh, this property of integers can be kind of handy if you know how to use it. So there's that. So uh, continuing on. So uh, another thing you need to know about arithmetic is that. Uh, you can have compound mathematical statements, uh, just like you you see here in this in this first line, right? Where you have multiply, then subtract, then plus, and then yada yada yada. Now, the way that the compiler reads that is that mathematical statements that use multiple operands are ev evaluated by order of precedence. So, ex expressions in parentheses are evaluated first, then multiply, divide, and mod. Uh, they are all on the same level of priority. Those are executed next, and then add and subtract are executed last. So, so if you, if the compiler sees it, the way the way it would uh, uh, break this down is that it would scan it from left to right. Well, I, I think we all took algebra already. We already know order of pre precedence, right? Uh, PEMDAS. So. Scanning from left to right, uh, we see that there's no parentheses, so we would disregard this rule. Uh, the next level of precedence is uh, multiply, divide, and mod. So scanning left to right, we see 3 times 7. So that's evaluated first, and 3 times 7 gives us 21. And then scanning left to right again, the next one of these three is multiply. So we do this next, and that gives us 10. And then scanning left to right again. 
uh, we see divide, so 10 divided by 4. Uh, because these are integers, uh, it would be it would normally be 2.5 because but because it's integers, it would give us 2 instead. So there's that. So after this line, we have minus plus plus, which are all on the same level of uh, priority. So next we do 21 minus 6, which is, gives us 15. And then we do 15 plus 2, which is gives 17. And then plus 6, uh, giving us 23. Okay? Now, uh, parentheses helps make a mathematical expression easier to read and helps manage order of precedence. So uh, this is going to be very important when you're doing your lab one, when you're when you're uh, doing calculations, because the parentheses helps manage the order in which you do your calculations. Okay, but uh, I'll talk more about lab one at the end. Uh, let's just uh, continue. So, uh, moving on with the lecture activity, uh, copy this code and analyze the results. So here's what I'm gonna do. Oops. I'm gonna exit. Um, I'm gonna copy this. Put it here. And I actually don't need this, so I'm gonna cop comment it out just for now. So let's run this code and see what we get. So, if you understand what's happening in this code, we have a uh, compound mathematical statement where we have this, okay? So we have 5 times 3 plus 8 times 7 plus 9 divided by 3. Now, the way it would do this normally is because it, is that it would scan it from left to right. Uh, we get 5 times 3, which is 15. Then we'll do this next, which is 8 times 7, which is 56. And then we'll do this next, which is 9 divided by 3, which is 3. And then we get 15 plus 56 plus 3, which gives us 74. But the difference in the next line is that uh, uh, what we, we have the same numbers here, but the only difference is that we put parentheses here and parentheses here. Uh, this caused these to uh, these mathematical operators to operate first. So first it would do this, then it would do this, and then it would carry on with everything else. And the result gave us a completely different number. Do you see that? So where you put parentheses in a mathematical operation makes a big difference. So uh, just remember to keep that in mind. So moving on with the lecture. So, and that was, that wraps up pretty much everything I wanted to talk about uh, arithmetic. But now we're going to go into control structures, uh, which all of you should have seen already. So getting into it. So, um, so one of the first control structures we're going to talk about is if statements. You, you should have seen this already. So. One of the key components of a C++ program is the ability to make decisions. One of the tools used for this is the if statement. If statements require the evaluation of a logical expression. So uh, you, can have, you can have it be one way where you just have if expression, and then you have code here if this expression is true, or you can have multi-way. So um, it's going to check if uh, this expression is true first. Um, if it's not, if we have an else if there, it's going to check if that's true. If it's not, it's going to continue down the line until we find um, some expression that's true, okay? But if all of them are true, um, well, well, actually, if all of them are false, um, one of the catch-alls is just uh, having an else at the bottom of a long if statement. Uh, this is the default if none of the expressions above were true. 
Now, expressions are checked in order, okay? So if the expression inside uh, one of the parentheses evaluates to be true, then the, ex the statement underneath it will execute and everything else is ignored, okay? Now, when you put an expression here, it actually has to be, the expression has to be um, in a form that can be interpreted as either true or false. Uh, here's a list of some of the relational operators, okay? So uh, this double equals checks if a, a variable is equal to another variable. Uh, we have do not equal, uh, which is not equal to. We have less than, less than or equal to. We have greater than, and then greater than or equal to. Um, so these are the relational operators. Uh, we often use these in our in our expressions when we're declaring if statements, okay? But you probably want to see this at work here. So uh, moving on. So imagine, so this is more of the lecture activity. Imagine you are evalu evaluating test grades in a class and you are grading on a pass fail system. Write a one-way selection if statement that accepts an, an int called student grade. If student grade is grade 70 or greater, then see up passing. Else, if it's lower, see up failing. And then part B of this activity is, imagine you are evaluating test grades in a class and you are grading on a letter grade system. Write a multi-way if statement that accepts an int student grade if student grade is 90 or greater, see out A. If it's 80 or greater, see out B, and so on and so forth. So um, once again, I I actually already pre-wrote the code here, so let me go ahead and I'm gonna copy this. Let's comment this out. Put that there. I'm going to copy this, put that there as well. So um, so uh, these two uh, sections of the lecture activity, they're, they're actually very similar. We're creating a code that uh, evaluates a student's grade. Uh, the only difference between them is that uh, part A uses the one-way statement while part B uh, uses the multi-way statement where you have more than one selection available. So let's go ahead and see this in action, shall we? So. We're going to enter the student's grade. Uh, there's only two alternatives. If, if the student grade, this is the expression, is greater than 70, the student is passing. Else, he's failing, OK? So if I entered uh, 90, obviously they're passing, right? So because 90 was greater than 70, uh, this line executed here, uh, see up passing, okay? And this, everything else in this if statement is ignored, okay? But if I ran it again, and this time I wrote a number that's less than 70, like, I don't know, like 60, uh, it see out it failing because student's grade was 60 ended up being less than 70 so because this statement here 60 is greater than 70 because this expression evaluated to be false it ignored this and the else is our kind of our catch all so this line executed instead and it outputted failing does that make sense okay so second is our multi-weight if statement where we're not evaluating students' grades on a pass-fail basis. We are evaluating a student's grade on a letter grade basis, okay? 
So here's our multi-way if statement. So it's asking us to enter the student's grade again. So according to this, if I put 91, it evaluates to A, see? But if I put a number that's uh, uh, less than 90, it's like, I don't know, say, past this. Let's say I entered 81. So because 81 is not less than 90, it ignores this. Is 81 greater than or equal to 80? Yes, it is. So it, it should output B when I press enter here. And surely enough, it does. Okay. And if I ran it again, and if I if it's greater than 70, it'll output C. If it's greater than 60, it'll output D. And if it's lower than that, it'll output F. So I'm gonna enter. I'm gonna enter another number that's less than 60. So maybe 59. Uh, because of that, it would ignore this and output F. Like that. See? So I hope all of this is shaking off the rust from when you took uh, CSE 201. So uh, let's continue here. So if statements are just one form of control structures, uh, another control structure that's very useful is the switch statement. So uh, if statements allows the user to choose one option, okay? But a switch statement allows us to select multiple options, okay? Now, uh, so the syntax of a switch statement is represented like this, where we have switch, uh, some type of expression, okay? So if this expression is equal to, so we have multiple cases here, okay? If the expression is equal to this value one, then statement one will execute. And then uh, anything, and then I'll continue down the line until it sees a break statement. So this code here, break semicolon, uh, it acts as a, uh, when, when the pointer reaches that, it'll break out of that exception handle. So when it sees break, that's a sign saying, uh, once you're here, ignore everything else in this switch statement, okay? So that, that's why we have breaks here and there, like in every case uh, value. So um, if, if the expression is equal to value two, the statement two will execute, and when it reaches the break, uh, it'll exit that exception handle and then proceed. And then the default at the bottom, that's kind of like the else in the if statement. If nothing else evaluated to be true, the default is your kind of like your catch all. Like this will happen if nothing else happens. So over here, um, this is continuing on so, of lecture activity two. So um, this is the code for the switch statement. Uh, it kind of does the same thing that the, the if statements that we made previously uh, did already. So uh, let's go ahead and copy this and see how it works. So I will exit. Let's copy this. Copy. We don't need this anymore. Let's comment this out and put this over here. Okay. And let me zoom out so you can see everything. So here's our switch statement. Let's before we run this, let's kind of look at this code and see how it works. So we have an int called test score, okay? Uh, it'll prompt us to enter a test score between 0 and 100. So 
um, after we get it, it'll... The, the, the expression for the switch statement is test score divided by 10. That'll give us a value, okay? Now, a very important thing to note is the fact that test score is of type int, and 10 is an int. That means that uh, when this expression here evaluates, it'll be of type int, which means that any uh, decimal portion is going to be removed, okay? So let's say that we had a test score. Let's say we had a very bad test score, like say 8. So 8 divided by 10 is going to be 0, uh, remainder something, but we but the de decimal part is, part off, is lopped off. So if we put 8 here, a test score of 8 out of 100, it would actually fall to case 0. Okay? Now case 0, case 1, case 2, all the way to case 5, they, because there's no breaks here, it all piles up into uh, C outing this statement here, the test grade is F, and then we do a break, which allows us to exit the switch statement and not check anything else. Okay? So, uh, mathematically speaking, any number between 0 to 59 would give us this. Okay? Uh, if you want me to demonstrate that, we can run this. So, please enter a test score. If we said 35, 30 divided, divided by 10 gives us 3, so it fall to case 3, and then it would fall down here to the test grade is F, so enter, yep, that's exactly what we see, test grade is F, and we can run this again if need be, so let's put, uh, let's say the student got a high test score, so like say, they got a 88 or something. Now, 8 divided by 10 would give us 8.8, .8, but because the point 0.8 is removed, we get 8 instead, and we should get the test grade as B. And that's exactly what happens. So, uh, that's the switch statement. Uh, I hope all of this makes sense. So... Moving on, so uh, that's actually all I had in terms of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that's actually all I had in terms of uh, control structures. Uh, now we're going to talk about loops, okay? So. Um, sorry. Loops are powerful structures that allow us to accomplish tasks that require repetition. So you might be wondering, uh, why do we need to repeat processes? Well, um, imagine trying to write a program that outputs the first 20 multiples of 3, okay? Uh, it would be tedious to write C out 3 then C out 6, then C out 9, and so on. Uh, this could end up being a very long code, okay? Now, because we're repeating the same process over and over again, uh, it would be more beneficial if we wrote a for loop that would allow us to do this, okay? So, for loops are generally used if the number of times we need to repeat a process uh, can be specified. So. The syntax for a for loop is here. So we have four, and then we have an initial statement here, separated by semicolon. We have the loop condition, separated by semicolon. And then we have the update statement, okay? Now, um, the way for loops work is that as long as the loop condition is true, uh, the code that's in the statement, it will continue repeating. So, um, 
the best way for me to show you how this works is if I demonstrated the code. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to actually I'm going to comment this out first because we don't need to see this anymore. Let's post it here. So this is a for loop that uh, gives us the first 20 multiples of 3, like I was saying earlier. So instead of C outing 3, 6, 9, so on and so forth, uh, all of that can be done using a for loop like this, OK? Now, we're iterating 20 times, OK? So our initial statement is i equals 0, OK? Now, this is our loop condition. As long as i is less than 20, v, this statement will continue to execute, OK? Now, every time this loop iterates, we increment i by 1, OK? So uh, let's go ahead and play this so you can see how it looks. So. Initially, i is equal to zero. So when, so when we executed the statement, we get three times zero. We see out that, and it gives us zero. Okay, and then we end the line, so it starts the new line. Um, after that iteration, this update function occurs, and we increment i by one. Okay, so now i is equal to one. So now we, when we execute the for loop again, we get three times one. And that's what we see out. We get 3. And then i is increment again. So when we iterate this again, we get 3 times 2 and line, which gives us 6. And it continues doing this 20 times. Now, the way uh, you want to see this working is um, let's actually go into the debug feature so that you can see this happening, OK? So I'll debug it, put you here, put you here. So I'm going to step through the line of code, OK? So the breakpoint is here, and the, the arrow is pointing here. So I'm going to continue stepping. So I'm going to step. We have C out 3 times 1. Currently, if you look in autos, i is equal to 0, OK? So we get. 3 times 0, which is 0. And then uh, because we're not done with this for loop, we would step again. And the pointer goes back up here. OK? Now i is equal to 1. 3 times 1 gives us 3. And then because we're not done iterating, i is currently equal to 1. 1 is still less than 20. We don't break out of here until i becomes a, until this evaluates to something that's uh, that's greater than or equal to 20. So you can see as we keep iterating, this pointer will go up here until this for loop terminates, OK? So I think you understand the, how this code works now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop debugging, OK? OK, so that's for loops, OK? Uh, the, uh, the other kind of loop that uh, you probably learned is the while loop. Now, the main difference between the for loop and the while loop is that the for loop is used when we generally know the number of times we need to repeat a process. The while loop is used if uh, the number of times we need to repeat a process, uh, it, it can't be specified or is uncertain. So you might be wondering uh, what it means by that. So so, uh, so these, the syntax for a while loop is here. We have while, then expression, and then statement. So. Uh, let's copy this code so that you can see this working. Oops. Copy this. Let's 
Let's comment this out. Hmm. I don't know why it ended like that. Let me try to fix that. So let's see how this works. So over, so back in this previous for loop, uh, we wanted to see the first 20 multiples of three, okay? So we know how many times we have to iterate. We, we have to iterate 20 times, okay? Now let's say that in this situation, we want to know all of the multiples of three that are less than 50, okay? So in this situation, we actually don't know the number of the number of times we have to iterate. Well, we actually do if we do the math, 50 divided by 3, but for the sake of example, let's say that we don't know, okay? Uh, that's when the while loop is uh, useful. So the way this works is that while I, while this expression is true, uh, this statement here will continue to operate. So we will have uh, so the first multiple of three that's less than 50 is three so we will see out i and then we say i is equal to i plus three uh, this updates the value of i by adding three to it okay so it's kind of similar to this for loop but not really so you probably want to see this at work so I actually uncommented this so that you can compare the two. So let's go ahead and see it. So here's your for loop. We've already seen that. But over here with the while loop, um, um, we, we started out with 3. And then we kept adding 3 to i every time. Uh, eventually, when i became... 48 plus 3, which is 51. 51 ended up being greater than 50, which means that this statement ended up not being true anymore. That's when we break out of the while loop. But the entire time, uh, we were repeating the same process. So while loops are, well, loops in general are very important for C++ programs, and it helps you uh, when you're of repeating the same process over and over and it it helps you um, stop writing the exact same code over and over so there's while loops okay so moving on oh. so uh, so with that, that actually wraps up everything that I have for review. So let me just get out of here. So you can actually get this. Uh, you can actually download the PowerPoint from uh, Blackboard. And you can. Oops. You can you can uh, download the PowerPoint from Blackboard, and you can just copy paste the code, and uh, demonstrate that, and then send it to me. So let me uncomment here. Oh, my bad. Let me. I have to do this in pieces. And then over here. Okay, great. So, um, at this point in time, uh, th this is your lecture activity for this week. Um, yeah, I, I know I already copy pasted the code for you, but I, I don't care if 
you're not coding. But the important thing is that you're you're demonstrating this code and you understand how it works, okay? So I demonstrated um, arithmetic, mod, division on floating points, order of precedence, one-way if statement, multi-way if statement, switch statement, for loop, and while loop, okay? So uh, the reason I, I allowed you to uh, just copy-paste the code from this week's uh, PowerPoint is because um, I, I actually tried recording this while typing everything from scratch. It, it ended up being way too long and it was boring the whole video because I was typing the whole time. So uh, in order to turn this into me, uh, you know what to do. I need four comments on the top. So call this Lecture Activity 2 Name Your Name SID Put Yours Do This is going to be due September 11th, okay? So 09 11 2020. Save that. Okay. So at this point in time, go ahead and write the email to submit this to me. Call this CSE 2000 Q2S. Last name, first name, call it Act 2. Uh, let's run this one more time so we have a screenshot. So all that. For the one way of statements, put any number. For that, put any number. Put any number. And then... How are we going to get a screenshot of this? It's pretty big. Um, here. So. Uh, give me one screenshot. You don't have to capture everything. Uh, just to let me know that you've done this. So put the screenshot there. You don't have to capture everything. I'll know that if you did everything by by when I look at the CPP file. So the CPP file is over here, over here. Open that. And that, that's all you have to do to submit it, OK? So oops. So. Now, uh, I'm actually quite happy now because we are officially done with review. So theoretically, we covered everything that you should have learned in CSC 201. So now it's time for us to start uh, talking about lab one, okay? So I'm gonna minimize that. Let's close this, close this, close this. So uh, I'm actually going to go to Blackboard right now and uh, get Lab 1 going for you.
Okay, so now I'm over here on Blackboard. Um, over here you can find lab one, and the only file for it is this text file here. So we have this, okay? Uh, this is how I want you to do lab one. Open Visual Studio. Create a new project. Uh, C++ empty project. Find a place for you to put this. Hmm. I'm going to do this. Go to this folder and uh, let's call it lab1. Okay? So create. Over at source files, click add new item. Call it main.cpp add. So what I want you to do is copy all of this and paste it into here, okay? So, uh, your lab one, put your name, and put your SID, and this is due two weeks from now. So, uh, this lab covers the following, input, output, data types, control structures, and arithmetic, okay? Now, I, I know this looks pretty big, but uh, it, it's actually not that big. So, this is your task. An amusement park has hired you to program the ticket dispenser for their new roller coaster, and it must meet the following requirements. So, first, the program first welcomes them. So, you're going to see out, uh, welcome to your name, <laughs> amusement park, or something. Okay. Uh, number two, the user needs to be asked their name, their age, and how many tickets they wish to buy the, for themselves. So here for step two, uh, you're going to declare uh, three variables. Okay, You're going to declare a string name, an int age, and then int uh, tickets so that they can enter how many tickets they're buying. And then you're going to see in those three variables. Okay. So part three um, is the requirements. So if the buyer is younger than six, uh, do not calculate the costs because they're too young to ride. If they're between six and 17 inclusive, they're a child. If they're between 18 and 59, they're a regular adult. If they're between 60 and 74, they're a senior. If they're 75 or older, they're too old to ride. So. Um, so regular tickets are fifteen dollars, children's tickets are ten, senior tickets are twelve. So the way you would probably want to do this is if you ha is you have a long series of if statements. So if age is less than six, see out. Sorry, you're too young to ride. Else, if they're between six and seventeen, you calculate their cost that way. So you're going to have if statements and you're going to have uh, uh, mathematical operators, okay? So after you calculate the, the final cost, uh, you're going to multiply that. You're, you're going to add a 3.5% sales tax to it. And then lastly, the program finishes with addressing them by their name and then telling them how many tickets they bought and the total cost, okay? So, uh, these are some tips if you want to like improve your program. And here are the instructions to submit. So send an email to me with a the CPP file attached. And, hmm. Three screenshots. Did I really say that? Well, I, I actually I don't I don't really need three screenshots. 
I, I, I'll just change it to one screenshot. I'll just update that when I get the lab because, yeah, I don't need that many. So, just one screenshot. Uh, put your name, your age. You don't have to put your real age. Just put any integer. And then how many tickets you're buying. Take a screenshot of that. And then the way you submit this is uh, um, the same way that you submitted your lecture activities in the past. So you say CAC 2000 Q2S, last name, first name, and then say lab one. So with the screenshot, with the CPP file after you've you know, you typed everything out. So, uh, generally, I think this lab is very easy uh, as long as you, uh, if you meet all these requirements, uh, you should get the full points for the lab. Okay? So, um, but, I, but, but, but once again, if you're, if you or anyone is having trouble or you're struggling, um, I'm always available to you, so uh, don't be afraid to uh, send me an email if you need any help or anything. So, but anyways, uh, yeah, that's that's all I have for this week. Um, I, I'm going to do a uh, Zoom meeting from 12 to 12.50, uh, the day that you're seeing this video. So, if you want to join... Uh, please do because uh, we can talk about this and we can work on this together okay so hopefully I will I will see you then so uh, yeah bye <laughs>